grab a strap. We will use that. Um, the door's open, so the dog's probably gonna bark at something, but we know this and we love dogs anyway, I think. <laughs> Short Dharma today, um, really just kind of uh, acknowledging uh, this capacity of our practice, whether it's like the yoga practice or like the being a human practice, that we can allow for this new space and new beginning at any point. And I think that that comes up so beautifully as a theme and a focus when we have spring. And like, I woke up today and I looked outside, I was like, the trees are even more green than they were yesterday. Like we have just in this one day, like I spent all day yesterday outside, and now they look even more green. Like we have all of this continued um, resurgence of energy going on. We had Easter yesterday, and in the pagan roots of the holiday, you have the goddess Aster, and she is the, uh, the symbol or the deity of new life, of fertility, of bringing things out, of letting things emerge. And in our yoga practice, we begin at the very, very, very first thing in the Yoga Sutras. It says, the practice of yoga begins now. Every time I open the book, I say the words, I remember the words, that's that moment, that's the now, and that's when things begin. And at any point, we have that opportunity to bring that out in our lives or in our poses and our breath, um, in new beginnings with our homes and such. Um, and it's just a really, really beautiful gift that we have. Yeah. So taking your index finger and your thumb together, we'll begin at the center of the forehead, brushing outwards towards your temples. And then going from the sides of your nose up to your temples on your cheekbones. And the temples down to the chin. From the sides of your nose down to your chin on your laugh lines. Massaging that space behind your ears that feels so yummy. And lifting up on your head right from that point. Taking a nice big breath in. And breath out. Resting your hands down in your lap, trying to keep as much of that lift from that point behind the ears as you can. Even as you notice the flow of your breath, acknowledging that capacity to have this new thing constantly throughout our day, it's a new breath, getting new air in. You come to the completion of something and find space for something new. And next time you breathe in, nice and full through your nose. Give a big exhale through your mouth. And again, like that. For three ohms. Starting to open your eyes, 
Just relax your right ear over towards your right shoulder and let your chin soften down just ever so slightly. Take one more exhale where you're at and then bring the head back to the center and relax your left ear over towards your left shoulder with the chin relaxed down ever so slightly. One more breath out. And bringing your head back up, this time reach your left arm out to the left side as you take your right, arm, right ear down to your right shoulder. Just energetically extending out through the fingertips. Let's next exhale, go ahead and relax your arm, drop your chin down and then lift it back up. And then this time taking your right arm out as you relax your left ear towards your left shoulder. I know, somebody is demanding of snuckles today. Hi, yes, I know. On your next exhale, relaxing your arms <laughs> down with your nose. Thank you. I know you're trying to help. You're just a very good helper. And we're going to take a big side bend up and over. So bring your right hand out to the side a little bit more and then extend that left arm up as you drop your left hip downwards. One more breath out. And then take both arms up as you come in towards the center. And as you exhale, left hand down, right arm up and over. Really drop that right hip down into your seat. One more exhale. And then come back to the center, lift both arms up. You're gonna twist over towards the right side. Soften your belly in that twist. Inhale, come back to the center, reach both of those arms up and twist over towards the left side. Getting taller on your breath in and softer in the belly as you breathe out. Inhale, back to the center. We're going to twist again and then we're going to start layering some things on. So coming into your twist and then your back arm, your right arm is going to reach up and over. Reach out a little bit more, see if maybe you can pull your heart more over towards the right side, if the space is available. If you're already at your max, great. Uh, as you take your next exhale, we're gonna drop your arm down, go ahead and cross your arms, and let your spine roll back a little bit, so maybe you're a little bit more open behind your shoulders. And take the bottom arm, you're gonna unwind it, coming into a twist, lift up from behind your ears and reach the left arm up and over. Then maybe see if you can twist a little bit more into it. Maybe there's some extra space available. And on your exhale, go ahead and roll that arm forward, cross the arms over and try to let that upper back open just a little bit more, letting your head soften forward. As you take your next inhale, you're gonna take the bottom arm. We're just gonna take one breath, one movement to reach up and over. And as you exhale, cross the arms. Inhale, unwind the bottom one, reach it up and over. Exhale, cross the arms, and then keep going with this little arm weavy, twisty work. Kind of exaggerate things, maybe feel like you're channeling your inner like Martha Graham, Isadora Duncan, crazy, uh, awesome modern dance skills. And then work through one more time on each side. So it should be when your left arm comes over next that you should be even, but you can decide if that's not the case. And then go ahead and unwind yourself and come back up towards the center. We're gonna come down onto our backs. You're going to want to have your strap handy. So if you have, you know, like the scarf, the tie, whatever you happen to have around, I'm um, just bringing that down by you when you come down onto the ground and bring your knees into your chest. Go ahead and wiggle out for a little while. Finding some softness in your body. Maybe a little bit more steadiness in your breath after making that transition. Like sometimes when we change like our body position, all of a sudden the breath went away because we had to do something differently and it's like, it's okay. 
the practice begins now again. Go ahead and set your feet down. And take your hands and bring them back behind your head and then snuggle your shoulders in a little bit closer. I'm going to see if you can lift your heart right up into the front of your rib cage so your chest starts to get a little puffy and my waist is reaching up away from the floor. And then maybe once you get up there, you can wiggle the shoulders in a little bit more. It's kind of like um, how bridge pose works where you wiggle the shoulders underneath to have a little bit more space. And if this feels great, maybe your elbows come to the floor and then you actively push your elbows down into the floor. And maybe you extend one leg and decide that that feels great and that means you want to extend the other one. Or if it doesn't feel great, you're just going to leave your legs bent. But see if you can extend the legs and keep pushing your shoulders and your elbows down, opening up the chest, relaxing your throat and your eyebrows, still feeling the heart float up into the front of your rib cage. Egg breath in. Breathing out, and relax the body. I'm gonna bend into the knees again. Take your strap, loop it around the bottom of your right foot, and extend that leg, making it as straight as possible, even if it's nowhere near your torso. Just going for a really straight leg, so we're feeling that extension of the joint right at the back of the knee there. Wrapping up the strap around your hands so that you don't have to work as hard to hold on to it. Pushing the foot outwards into your strap. One more round of breath. Relax the, the leg a bit, so finding a little bit more bend. Slide your left leg a little further away from you. Take both ends of the strap into your left hand, and then lead with the heel, crossing the body and creating a stretch along your inner thigh. I find if I don't feel it, if I move the leg further away, that helps. Both hips down, rooting down into the floor, finding your breath again even when doing weird things, because despite some of our best efforts, it seems like even the most well-planned life is just full of lots of weird things. <laughs> it's good. I think it's good. It'd be boring otherwise. Then bring it back to the center. You're going to take both ends of the strap into your right hand and just pull your knee down in the direction of your armpit. You need to adjust your left leg Maybe it goes further out, but for many of us, maybe you actually do take the leg in a little bit closer, but you can do a little dance with it until you find the right place. And then the front of your right shoulder, what it might be doing here is turning upwards towards your foot. I'm going to relax the shoulder and let your hand and maybe your forearm muscles hold on the strap rather than tensing the front of your right deltoid. One more exhale, nice, soft, and squishy like angel food cake in that hip. And then releasing the strap from your foot, setting it down. Oh, I feel like I've been given a new hip. And you're gonna take and wrap the strap around the bottom of your left leg. Wrap your hands around, extending that leg out just as far as possible. So really pushing the foot out into the strap. You should have lots of space between your calf and your thigh. The feeling this joint open up a lot back there, taking breaks if the straightening muscles are working too hard to keep you here. So you just relax it a little bit and then go back to it. One more round of breath. Then you're going to send 
the right leg a little bit further out, both ends of the strap into your right hand and lead with the heel going over towards the left, getting that outer thigh stretch, both hips staying down. One more round of breath. Coming back to the center, taking both ends of the strap into your left hand, bend the knee, drop the knee right into your armpit and convince this front of the shoulder that it really doesn't need to be quite so tense. It can soften and open up a little bit. One more breath in, deep breath out. And then release the strap from your foot, set the soles of the feet down. Open your arms out, Whew, excuse me. And see if you can summon your legs up towards your chest and you can do it one at a time if you like, or Maybe you try both legs at the same time. You can do it one at a time. It's going to make it a lot easier. So do it a couple of times. Maybe you take left leg, right leg. Maybe like right leg, left leg. I think I got to do one more time. Left leg, right leg. And you're going to drop both knees over towards your right side. Wiggle your shoulders open towards the left. Move the knees as far away from you as you need to. Just a short twist here. One more exhale. Jezebel. And then bringing your knees back to the center and taking them over towards the other side. Hey, sweetheart, come here. Yeah, you're okay. Everything's okay. Yeah. One more breath out. And coming back to the center. We're gonna rock ourselves up and then come to a seat. When you get into your seat, yes, you're gonna take your right leg in, leaving it open. You might adjust your seat a little bit so you've got your, your hips squarely down. And then lift your toes. And start to bring your body up towards your leg, knowing that you might not get super far, but we just did the strap hamstring work, so maybe there's a little bit more room there. Relaxing your right hip in. So you think of the right thigh bone settling in, which will let the hips tilt forward a little bit more. Staying here as you exhale. And then coming up and turning over towards your side. You're actually going to take your leg, scooch it out a little bit more. So just a little bit more open in our shape. And then sliding your left hand down, reach your right arm up and over as you relax your right hip down. So I'm not mirroring you here, but you got the chest. Big breath in, breathing out, and then come on up and we're gonna take just one more fold forward again. So the legs are a little bit more open. You might have more room. Just a quick visit into this fold on the same leg, exhaling. And slide it back and switch the legs up. So take the left leg and send the right leg forward, adjust the things that are underneath us and then take your body forward, lift those toes up and towards your face. So you can take your heart and lift it out and towards your foot. One 
One more breath in. Deep breath out. Start walking it back. And you're gonna turn over towards your leg. I'm just gonna shift because it's weird not to face you. The leg that's in front of you, scooch it forward a little bit. So now your hips are just a little bit more open. You're gonna slide your right hand down, reach your left arm up and over. You see, I'm trying to keep my chest open, but my arm is just slightly in front of my face. Softening the inner shoulder as best I can, which is a constant dialogue I am having. Rest the left hip down. One more breath out. And then lifting up, turning yourself towards that extended leg and coming forward again. Think a really relaxed back. Big exhale. And then walking it back. You're gonna send both legs out in front of you. Widen them out a little bit. I have to adjust the flesh. So just maybe about wider than your hips. Probably not quite as wide as your mat. And stay in somewhere where it's really comfortable to you. Let your chin rest forward and then let your heart rest forward. Even take your hands onto your lower back. If you wanna just bring some tenderness, some, some thoughtfulness there, maybe massage your lower back. Not really trying to go very far, just trying to find a space where the back is relaxed in this. One more exhale. You sit on up, swing your legs back behind you. We'll come into table pose or we'll be on our knees for a little bit. So if you need to pad anything up, please do that. A few rounds of cat and cow, dropping the belly, looking up as you breathe in and rounding through the spine as you breathe out. Just moving in a way that seems to make sense in your body, maybe side to side. Eventually landing in center and taking your right foot forward by where your right hand is, bringing your hands up onto your thigh. And trying to lean as far forward as you comfortably can, which might be a little bit more than you could hold for a long time. And then you can back off. Maybe you wiggle the foot forward a little bit more after that. You might just take your left arm up if you want some more balance, keeping the right hand down, or if you want to challenge your balance a little bit more, lift both arms up. And let your heart reach up and forward like when we were laying on the floor and your heart and your waist were lifting up and away from the floor. So one more breath in. Exhale, take the hands down. You're gonna bring the hands to the inside of your leg and then wiggle your foot a little bit further forward. And then start to shift the hips back coming to a straight-ish or straight leg. And then just relax your right hip downwards instead of letting it drift outwards. One more exhale. And then pulling your right leg back and bringing the left foot forward by where your left hand is, taking your hands up onto your thigh, as many scooches as it needs to get up there, and you're gonna lean a little bit further forward than you can hold for a long time. So maybe gently going as far forward as you might be able to go, and then pulling it back into some place that's a lot more stable and maybe a little bit more familiar in your body. Wiggle the foot forward if you have space for it now. And then you're either gonna take the right arm up or both arms up. But in either case, you've got this heart leaning forward, lifting outwards and forwards. Nice long, steady breaths. One more big inhale. And then relax your hands down to go on the inside of the leg. So you've got a little bit more room in the hip. You're gonna wiggle the foot forward again and then start to pull your hips back, make the legs straight or straight-ish. Relaxing 
your left thigh bone downwards. Big breath in. Big breath out. And start to slide your left leg back. We'll come all the way down onto our belly. See if you can go nice and slow on your journey down there. Maybe wiggle your legs back a little bit further when you arrive. Hands in by your low ribs. Open the hands out just an inch or so more than what you might usually do. And see if that lets this cobra pose be nice and yummy and open, even if it's not very high. One more inhale. Exhale, soften, bring the hands back in where they might usually be. But we're gonna come back to downward facing dog. So spread out through the fingers, come back and give yourself some walking in your heels. So you bend alternate knees and release your calves a little bit more. Strong arms, all 10 fingers pressing down strong. And when you start to feel evened out in your legs, just take a big breath in. Big loud sigh. And then feet and hands start to come together. And bend your knees enough that you can fold forward, even if you're holding on to your shins. Maybe you have your belly and your thighs touching. And try to find a place where you can relax your head. Keep your knees bent. You can walk your hands up the body as you come to standing. Go slowly when you arrive. Give yourself a moment to orient in space. And then you're going to take your right foot forward and your left foot back into warrior one. We're going to take the arms, reach them up, get nice and long through the spine. And keep the length as you wrap the left elbow on top for eagle arms or a hug or no elbows wrapping. Good. Now see if you can keep the leg bent, keep the knee facing forward, keep the hips from going out to the side, and then bring the elbows down on the inside of your knee. Notice what happened to the breath. And then take it all the way back up. And what you're going to do is you're going to try to get the back leg to lift up before you set it down. So we're just going to come to stand up at the front of the mat. And you can give yourself an extra hop in to give it a little less space. And then go for it and set it down. And then you're going to take your right leg and wrap it on top. Is that it? Yes. <laughs> we're going to wrap it on top. For eagle, like what was like doing something weird there? No, it wasn't weird. It's just eagle pose, just for an exhale, and then stay low. Unwind your leg. Come into chair pose. Release your hands to your heart. This is where it was weird. It's like was it weird there? No, it's weird here. It's always weird somewhere, right? We're gonna take some tap backs with the left foot, so we're still working the right leg. I'm gonna tap it back. Try to keep the knees bent. And tap it forward. If you're able to step back really far and you want to, you can do that. Do three more. You can try to go slow. It's a little bit more challenging that way, or you can just tap it back and forth and back and forth. It's a little bit easier to go fast. When you get your chair, relax your hips down. And then from down, come all the way back up to standing. Oh my goodness, wiggle things. <sighs> For another long walk yesterday. I don't know if I'm sore from that or if that was actually really hard, but either way, you made it through. Awesome. Just one more leg to get through. We'll come into warrior one. So bending the front knee and lifting the arms up. We lift the arms up to encourage the spine to lift the heart to reach outwards. And then it's going to be opposite arm on top. So this should be your right arm if it's your left leg that's forward. Hugging or elbows together without twisting if that is what serves you. Then keeping this good alignment in the legs, making sure that that left thigh and knee don't go any sort of wonky places whatsoever. You're gonna bring your elbows down on the inside of the knee, watching and observing the breath without judgment, maybe an encouragement to even itself out again, but not worrying if it doesn't, and then coming back up. 
And then you're gonna have, I know the, the arms are comfortably, don't like worry about how long you can get the leg up or whether you make it or not. You're just gonna take the foot, lift it up and set it down. And then cross your, no, it's the left leg. Yep, so eagle on the other side and you're gonna sit your hips back. Short visit, exhale, stay low, unwind the leg, feet are together. Unwind the arms, hands at your heart. And then we have five steps back. So you're gonna take the right foot, step it back. It might be a little bit. Yeah. The slower you go, the harder it is, even if you don't go very far. You could go a little bit faster. As with anything, you're moving at the pace of your own breath. If you're not sure how many you've done, this might be your fifth. And then when you get in a chair pose, find that good alignment, drop down a little bit lower, and from there, come and stand up. Shake and wiggle things. And we'll take our, our feet out nice and wide here. We're gonna come into a forward fold. Whatever arm variation you like, I'm just gonna take hands to the floor. Take a big breath in as you exhale, coming down. Rest your head. Bend your knees if you need to. Make sure the weight is in your feet and not in your hands. Stay in here as you exhale. And then bringing your hands to your hips, little bend, come up nice and slow. I'm gonna come in a triangle pose, turning your toes over towards the right, shift your hips, slide the right hand down and open the left arm up. Try to reach from your heart into both hands. Now, look down towards the space about two feet in front of your right foot. So like out there. You're gonna come up, hands on your hips, look over there and try to stand up on this leg. Ugh. Yes. I know, this is weird, but more like alignment bum stuff. And that was that. I'm just gonna open back up. Switch to triangle pose on the other side or adjusting your space you're ready for triangle on the other side. So finding those wide legs, turning the toes over, and we'll shift the hips. And taking the hand down and the arm up, opening from the heart out into your hands, ears away from your tailbone. And then look down that space about two feet in front of your foot. You bring your hands back to your hips. You gotta bend this leg a little bit. So if you can look over there and just come to stand up. And wiggle and shake things. And we're gonna come to a wall. You need a, enough wall or sturdy space at about hip level that you can push into it and it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, I'm gonna move over here and put my hands in pet spit. <laughs> we're gonna stand about what you imagine is um, like a leg's length away from the wall. You can adjust this. Or actually, here, come, come closer. You're gonna bring your hands at about hand height out to the wall. Bring your hands a little bit wide, like your thumbs are as wide as your shoulders. So not your hands, but your thumbs are as wide. Your index fingers point up. And then you're gonna walk back until your feet are underneath your hips. So you don't wanna walk back too far. I'm going to come into this warrior, I'm sorry, downward dog at the wall, wrapping elbows down, pushing the hands out and forward. Maybe your knees are very bent to allow for tightness in the back or the hamstrings. Keep trying to relax the elbows downwards, which is going to open those inner shoulders. One more exhale. Then look forward, walk forward. Go ahead and stand yourself up. Swing the arms, loosening them up. And then we're gonna use the wall coming into warrior three. So a very similar space to the, 
the downward dog at the wall, we're gonna use the hands pressing out in warrior three. So take your hands out of that hip width apart, thumbs are shoulder, I'm sorry, shoulder, hip height, thumbs are shoulder width apart, index fingers point up, oh, words are hard. And coming into this downward dog space, now here's where it gets a little funky. I want you to look at your hands, take them a half a hand print over towards the left. So you just kind of scooch them over about two inches. Now you're a little bit more on top of your left leg, which is good because you're going to stand on it, lift your inner right thigh and push your hands into the wall, trying to wrap your elbows down and release the backs of your ears from the back of your back. One more breath in and then set the right foot down and then you're going to move your hands back to the middle, maybe just an extra inch over towards the right side. So now you have this slight lean over towards the right leg. So you can lift the inner thigh on the left leg, lifting that inner heel, inner heel, inner space, pushing out, relaxing elbows down, maybe even breathing. And then two feet down, look forward, go ahead and walk yourself up and forward towards that wall and swing your arms again. We're gonna do this again. You could do it just like without anything and just kind of in the center of your space and maybe you reach out into warrior three. If you wanna do that, go for it. I actually kind of think this is maybe even a little harder to have the fingertips only at the wall. So you take the, just the very tips of your fingers at the wall instead of pressing your palms in. Yeah. So you're gonna go ahead about that hip width apart, fingertips. You're gonna come into that, that downward dog spacing Move your fingertips over like two inches to the left. Lift the right leg. You should feel that reaching. Different sensation in the shoulders. Set it down. Jezebel. Hands a little bit more over to the right. Hey, sweetheart. Lift that left leg. Reach out. And then set your foot down. And then go ahead and stand yourself up. Hey, buddy. What's the deal? I know. Yes, the world exists out there. You cannot yell about it. Thank you. We're going to come from here back to the center space and bring your feet together. I love warrior threes at the wall. It's like, oh, I'm going to push the, the house down. Uh, inner thighs together, inner thighs squeezing upwards. Reach your arms up, make steeple fingers or vira mudras. Stretch up and over towards the left side, pushing more into your right foot. One more breath in. Breathing out, and then up and over towards the left side, pushing down more into your right foot. Keep squeezing those inner thighs up and over. Jezebel. One more exhale. And then coming up, resting both hands down. I'm gonna shut the door because my neighbor's doing something very bizarre. And we're gonna come down to the floor now. Uh, make sure you have your strap handy somewhere. Hey, buddy, come here. Don't make any difference. Okay, you're <laughs> gonna take your legs out wide. Hi, thank you. Okay. Once you get down, legs out wide. You have to adjust the adjust the the stuff, and take your hands down behind your back. Let your heart lift up and forward. Maybe you feel the big toe knuckles reaching out here. It's a way of extending the legs that doesn't like, you know, it's not quite as intense for the hamstrings, but it's still a really long leg line. So pushing the big toes out. Hi. You're very saucy today. And then taking your hands forward, if that feels good to you, or maybe you can just stay with your hands back behind. If it feels good to go forward, you will go as far forward as you would like. Keep extending that big toe or big toe knuckle down and forward. Okay, hi. About two more breaths like this. And starting to walk yourself back in. And we're going to close the legs in. We're going to take just face forward. 
take your uh, take your right leg. You're gonna cross it over or leave it on the right side if you have to adjust things that you will. And then take your arm behind you, hug onto this thigh. Make sure you're lifted straight up and down. Lift your left toes. Exhale, soften into the twist. Think of your lower ribs dropping in, really kind of pulling this thigh into the center to get this outer hip space. One more exhale. And then release your twist. You're gonna take the legs, unwind them, and then wrap up on the other side. Or just tuck the knee in, hug the thigh, arm down behind you, lift the heart and your toes, and then soften the lower ribs, drag that knee inwards. Big breath in, big breath out. Release that twist. You're gonna unwind that left leg. We're gonna take the right leg up and you've got a couple of variations. You can take the leg open like so. If you put your ankle on your knee, it's gonna apply a little bit of pressure of this thigh bone going down. So it's gonna get a little deeper into the hamstring and it gets deep into the hip here. You can also take the foot up onto the side of your hip and do a little wiggle to snuggle the thigh bones together. This is really gonna put more pressure on that thigh bone to go down, so it's gonna get very deep into the hamstring to send yourself forward. I'm on the pinky toe edge of the foot over here. Choose any of these things that seems like the best choice for you, and then lead with your heart coming forward as much as you have space for. One more round of breath. Start to walk it back in, gently picking the leg up to extend it outwards, and then finding one of those variations on the other side. So you've either got knee bent, ankle on knee or thigh, and squeezing and squishing and pinky toe edge out here on the outside of the hip. Keep those right toes lifted as you draw your body forward and just as much as you have space for it working into what is not whatever we think it should be because it shouldn't because if it should be it would be we're in exactly the place we should be even though we might be somewhere different later or want to be somewhere different later we're here now Take one more full deep breath. And then start to lift it up. I'm gonna unwind the legs. Grab your strap, probably. If you can comfortably hold on to your foot and extend it, and you don't wanna grab your strap, I find the strap to actually be kind of hard to work with in heron pose. Um, but know that you can always take this modification. So take one leg, you're gonna fold it in, and the other leg is gonna be your working leg. If you're gonna use the strap, you're gonna bring your hands in fairly close together. So you're gonna start off really close to the foot because it's so much easier to do this than it is to do this. So you're gonna start off as close as you can. If you find that you can grab onto both hands and you can let the ego go about the idea of you straightening the leg, great, cool. Letting my ego go about certain things has been like the name of the game lately. So we're gonna come up, you're gonna hold on to either two hands in the strap close to your foot or the hands on the foot. And when you get up on your hips, it's a little uneven. Your legs are not symmetrical. It's not gonna be perfectly even weight on the hips. But you're somewhere in that direction, not trying to like pull yourself over. Start off with a lifted chest with the puppy bird chest. Broaden your collarbones. Have a little bit of that feeling like you did on the floor where your 
heart and your waist were picking up and forward. And then rather than worrying about straightening the leg, can you send that foot out and away from you? Oh, I don't know if this is gonna get straight today. Oh, it's close. I don't know. I write hamstring these days. It's just like insisting we take things slow. So I have commitment issues to this straight idea. I'm not sure if I'm ready for it yet. <laughs> I'm just gonna take it slow. Okay, I respect you. Lift your heart up. <laughs> Start to relax your right leg and take it down. And we'll work towards the other side. So you're just gonna flip your legs over. You got that left leg drawn in. It doesn't have to be drawn in any specific way. It's fairly arbitrary where you put the left leg. It's just kind of there as a balance point. And you bring it in close so that you only have to extend one leg because extending one leg is hard enough as it is. So you're gonna grab on, we're gonna find the hips more or less even, but it's not perfectly even. We start feeling that expansion of the chest, the bird poses, I'll have the puppy bird chest, and then extending the leg out and away. Lifting your heart up towards your toes. You can look majestically off beyond your toes. And it's not about making the leg straight. You wanna send that leg out and away from you. You're taking flight here. One more breath in. Exhale, start to release that leg. And then we're gonna come down onto our back. So make sure you have whatever you're gonna want for Shavasana, bring it down with you and know that we just flew away and now we can relax into some stuff. Go ahead and come down. Settle however you need here. Maybe do some rocking around. You can have knees into your chest if that is what you're wanting right now too. Hmm. We're gonna take the right leg, you're gonna take it in between the left foot and the hips. It's gonna come into this little um, like doorway you've created. And then you can catch the foot with your hand or with your, with your foot. You know, so the foot catches the foot there, or you can hold on. It depends on what kind of space you have. If your right knee is off the floor, I want you to roll over to your right hip until the knee comes down. And then over time, both hips might start to drift back down again. You can take your right arm behind your head, maybe hand behind your neck or hand behind your head. And maybe wiggle that elbow over towards the left a little bit, soften your inner right shoulder. You might feel that right knee reaching away from the rest of your body. Take one more breath tied up in this little knot. Bring your arm back into the center, unwind it. Unwind your right leg, set the right foot on the floor and start to slide the left side underneath. It may need a little bit of help. You need to move your right foot. You can catch with the foot or with the hand. If you need to roll over to get that knee down, that's what you do. It's fine not to be even on the hips here. But over as the time, as the space develops, you might be able to relax the hips down more, maybe, and it's fine if it doesn't. So it comes behind the head if you like. Wiggle the elbow over towards the right if you like. Still breathing. One more round of breath. Then unwinding your arm, unwinding your leg, taking the soles of the feet down, the knees point up, wiggle your hips back into center. 
Bringing your heels in nice and close to your hips, about hip width apart. We'll take one bridge pose, wiggle the shoulders underneath, push the hips up. Maybe you can wiggle the shoulders again. Feel the hips and the heart both opening outwards. Push down into the inner edges of your feet too. Don't rest on the pinky toe edges. One more breath in. Relaxing your shoulders and your hips and everything all the way back down onto the mat. Open your arms out, let your knees drop over towards the right. And after a bit, rolling the knees over towards the left. Letting them relax over towards the right again. And the left and changing sides one more time each side. So the next time you come over towards the left after that you'll return to center. From here, widening your feet a little bit, let the knees knock against each other. If there's anything that you need at the end of practice, any other adjustments, feeling free to go there to making that time and that space for yourself. And if you're ready to find your final rest, that's where we had it might be staying there with knees bent. Maybe you move out into corpse pose, finding whatever it is that helps you to feel supported, ready to be soft with yourself.
Start to come back to your body. Breathing a bit more deeply, wiggling your fingers and toes. I mean this emergence into that which comes next, this yet again new beginning. Rolling over to your favorite side in fetal pose, this pose in the gesture and offering of that idea. Also in gratitude for our practice. And coming up to your own version of a comfortable seat. Hands at your heart, heart open and lifted. Sailing practice by releasing an ohm together. Big breath in. Oh. to the love and light inside of each of our hearts. Namaste. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. In that position, it just looks like you have this Oh, this blue aura that's like <laughs> your hands matches so right. Yeah. <laughs> no, good week. Hi. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. Take care. You too. Bye bye.